Well, this is a great cure for the middle of the week blues. Talking to you. I do enjoy this. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, January 25th, which reminds me tomorrow's Thursday, my live stream. We go on live, me and Lily Star, every Thursday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Right after the bell, we hit our button and go live. We're there for about an hour talking to our viewers about tickers they're interested in. So stop on in, bring your ticker, we'll look it over and tell you our opinion, whatever that's worth to you. Four o'clock, Thursdays, every Thursday. Now we're going to do the same thing we do every day on this show. We're going to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. Now they're not the same, penny stocks are any stock under five bucks. There's a lot of those on the OTC, there's a lot of those on the major exchanges. And we go wherever the opportunities lie. Now we have been talking a lot about SPAC warrants here recently for good reason SPACs have a locked value on their stock a SPAC is a blank check company that comes onto the market looking to make a deal they've got a ticker they got some money they're trying to get somebody to take over that ticker well their stock is ten dollars to invest in and it is worth ten dollars until they consummate a deal it's actually locked it has a locked value you can bid it up you can bid it down but it's only worth ten dollars now what's the big deal about that well the companies have 18 to 24 months to consummate a deal if they don't it's a breach of contract because we got in with the promise that they were going to do that so if they fail we get our money back which means it was tied up for a year and a half two years with no gains i mean getting your money back is okay but not if it's been tied up for two years with no gains so when news comes out that these SPACs have deals coming or they're extending their deadlines the stock isn't going to move but the warrants do huge by default all the attention goes down to them and we see huger farther faster moves than you see on the stock by a long shot they're literally giving us hundreds of percent gains thousands of percent gains even tens of thousands of percent gains well i have been finding opportunities and there's lots of them i got over 80 of them right now all legitimate hot spec opportunities well i came up with this idea what if you only took 50 dollars and you invested in one hot spec that has a tight window that's going to have something happen in a very short amount of time and we expect it to bounce if it only goes up a thousand percent your 50 bucks is worth 500 Take that 500 and buy 10 SPACs at 50 bucks, and so forth and so on. Well, I decided to put my money where my mouth is, and I've done that. But I skipped the first step. I just didn't buy one SPAC, and I'm waiting. I went out and bought six SPACs at $50 each, roughly $50 each, and we're going to see what goes on. Now, I don't mind sharing which ones I got with you, but don't consider this a go buy this. I'm not trying to pump them. I would prefer you do your own DD. Uh, I will share my watch list with you today. You can at least see how many have news right now. And just click in on those tickers and see which ones have tighter windows, tighter deadlines, what sort of news it is. And then on your own gut feelings, pick the ones you want to do. So, that is what I'm involved with right now. I'm not playing any securities. I got a bunch of securities I'm waiting to come back. And if things go well with these warrants, maybe I can actually start averaging down some of these. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, it is right here at the OTC markets. I get everything here. I get my news here. I get tier changes here, share structure. You see what we do here. It all comes in through the day. It's constantly being updated. And I don't know of any other site that does that for all the OTC stocks. It makes research easy. So forget about going out to the internet doing your research. Start here. God, it'll save you so much time and energy. Energy. Now, you've seen the news going by, haven't had a lot of news to actually share with you. When I go through the news and I get all that news right here, I don't have to go anywhere else. I don't go searching for any of my OTC news. I get it all here. Well, eight out of 10 pieces of news right now are about mines, mining, getting minerals out of the ground, lithium, gold, silver, copper, nickel, just so much news about mines. And I just, I'm not into mines. It's just above me, too much technical jargon, too many of them still in exploration. So I don't post any of that news. So we're a little thin on news right now. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the OTC market and how we finished today. That's not looking good. It's really looking bad. I'm not liking it at all. So let's refresh this and let's hope 
<sighs> no, it's not good. Our dollar volume is at 1.6 billion. What were we, 1.7 yesterday, falling. Share volume, I don't even remember what it was yesterday. Maybe in the sixes, but it's in the fives, which is horrific. And our trades is under 250,000, which was our floor average before, between 250 and 300. So everything looks bad, bleak, dark. Sorry, folks, I wish I could tell you something better, but I'm not here to BS you. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. It is what it is. All right, I've got some stocks I want to share with you today. They came from three different areas. I just didn't go to the charts today. I got one going through charts, which I think is pretty bloody interesting. <laughs> then I've got another one that came from Cool Springs 246, a viewer on my YouTube channel. He told me to look at one, and when I looked at it, I said, you know what, this has got potential. So I'm gonna share that one with you too. And I'm gonna share a SPAC deal with you that I just got into and I think should run here in a very, very tight, short window. Let's jump into this. This first stock we're taking a look at was brought to my attention via a comment on YouTube. See, I do read them. This came from Cool Springs 246. Thank you, my friend. Keen eye you got there. This is ticker GLYC Glycomimetics. This is a biotech company. They create drugs. Now, I don't like to talk about biotech companies about as much as I don't like to talk about mining companies. For the same reason, actually, they've each got their own technical jargon that just makes it tough to understand and even tougher to explain to you. But if I'm going to be interested in a biotech, they've got to have a couple things. First off, they got to be a late clinical stage company. I want them having drugs in that phase three trial, the very last trial, closer to the finish line, closer to the pay day. These phase trials, from start to finish, phase one to phase three can take eight to 12 years. Who wants to be invested in an early clinical stage company? Wouldn't you much rather be in a late clinical stage company closer to that finish line? I would. The other thing they got to have is something hot in that pipeline. And this company has a drug that is helping people who have leukemia to live longer. And it looks like their drug is far superior to anything out there right now. And we're going to take a closer look at that without getting technical. So they finished the day today at $3.10 with a little over 2% drop. And this is on the NASDAQ any stock on the NASDAQ. So let's get a little information about the company. You know what they do, but I want to give you a little bit more. Glycomimetics is a late clinical stage biotechnology company discovering and developing glycobiology-based therapies for cancers, including AML and for inflammatory diseases with high unmet needs. The company's science is based on an understanding of the role that carbohydrates play in cell recognition and its specialized chemistry platform to discover small molecule drugs known as glycomimetics with alter carbohydrate mediated recognition in diverse disease states, including cancer and inflammation. Whew. You see what I mean? I have a hard time just saying that without stuttering. Now, we are going to be particularly looking at uproselin. Upro <laughs> there you go. Uproselin. I may just call it the drug. Now, they do have two drugs, but this is the one that's getting all the attention right now, uproselin. So, let's take a look at the volume that came in today, considering there is no direct catalyst going on right now. Well, she had a nice jump, didn't she? She went from 662 up to 2.4 million. We've got a 400% increase in volume there. Share structure for GLYC. All right, I did go look this one up and confusing enough, I found a bunch of 30 millions, a bunch of 40 millions, and a few 50 millions. So I'm really not sure what the float is. We know it's under 52 million. That's about the best we can do. The financials for glycomimetics at the end of 2021, we had $1.1 million and it didn't cost them anything. Not quite sure what that's about. Quarterly, we got anything coming in? Not really. We had $75,000 come in the second quarter of 2022, but nothing going on with this company. Disclosures. So what new filings we got over here? Oh, we got a ton of Form 4s. That's interesting. Form 4s are filed whenever the inside management of the company buys or sells shares of the company. And we got a lot of them going on there. Matter of fact, are there any more? 
yeah, we had a few more for November. Now, we don't have time to go through them all, but if you're doing your due diligence, you should go through every single one of them. And it doesn't take as long as you would think. Let's just poke our heads in and out a few of these just so we can see what's going on and how you read them. Here's one here in the middle of November. So this was Pearson Timothy. He's a director of the company. And right there in the middle, it'll tell you if they acquired them, an A. If it's green, you know they bought them. If it's red, you know they sold. He bought 19,000 shares at $1.29. Let's look at the last one for November. Uh, this is Junius Daniel. He's also director. He bought 20,000 shares at $1.87. Let's check one out here in December. This is Rock Eden. He is the chief medical officer, and he has bought 110,000 shares. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Let's look at one here in January. All right, this is the chief executive officer, and he's got a half a million, but these aren't shares of stock. These are options. And I don't know the details of this, but he's acquired them. And I'm sure seeing people buy the stock, he's buying options to make even a bigger gain, get getting paid off on his calls. But that's just a presumption. I don't know. But what we do see here is there is a lot of attention being paid to the company stock right now since November by the insiders, the management themselves. So what sort of news we got for the company? Well, we've got no news just for them. This news down here comes in from somewhere else online, Seeking Alpha, Business Wire, and it's not just news about the company, but also their competitors. Now, I see we've got a few pieces of news here about their earnings, transcripts, and a little bit of clinical data. But I found a page where somebody's done a lot of due diligence and are going to make things real easy for us. This right here was done by Brett Jensen on the 22nd. Lots of great information about this new drug they got, uh, Uprosilin, which I'm going to call the drug. And he tells us the reason he likes this company and what he's doing. He's playing options. He's buying calls. He tells you which calls he's doing. And he's betting on the price to rise. But he does have one concern. He tells us here that his main worry is that Glyco could get purchased for a significant premium. What he's worried about is the company buying them out. Right now, the stock is at $3.10. Any company, public or private, could come along and buy us for a premium. Just buy us right out for $4.50 a share. The stock itself would fall off the market. We'd get $4.50 for every share, and that'd be the end of the deal. We made our profit, about 50% gains in that example. So what's wrong with making a gain like that? Well, he sees himself as being cheated. He doesn't throw any numbers out there, but the fact of the matter is, when you're talking about an anti-cancer drug that can help with leukemia, this could easily get up to $50 or over $100. Bucks. Who wants $1.50 extra a share when you could get $50 or $100 more? So that's what his concern was. And I get that. I do. So let's take a look at his information here. He's done a real good job. The company has one clinical asset, Uprosilin, which I'm going to call the drug, for acute myeloid leukemia. And then they have another one that is clinically cleared, but they're looking for a development partner. So he doesn't talk much about that one, and I haven't looked at that one either. But we are going to look at Uprosilin because it is up there right now, and it's getting a lot of backing from a lot of countries. They tell us here that the drug has been granted fast-track designation from the FDA, breakthrough therapy designations from regulatory authorities in the U.S. and China, and orphan designations from the FDA and European medicine agencies. These orphan designations and the fast track designation, this is a big deal. These countries are backing this drug up because it's superior to any other drug out there right now. It's doing more and it's doing it better. So they want to get it out there as fast as they can. And these countries, these organizations will help to push the drug through the trials. This candidate produced encouraging data in early clinical stages. And based on these results, the drug has been entered into multiple late stage trials, including a double blind, placebo controlled phase three study to evaluate it in the treatment of 388 relapsed acute myeloid leukemia patients. 
Now this is where the rubber hits the road, folks. This is what makes this drug so much better than its competitors. The returns to date have been potentially groundbreaking. The overall survival event trigger was initially anticipated at around 22 months. 22 months of extra time for these leukemia patients. That's what we're talking about, life extension. There are two other drugs on the market right now, and they are giving about 10 months extra time, which is good when you're dying, of course, all the extra time you can get. But that's what makes this drug so much better. In November of last year, management indicated that the median follow-up is now anticipated to be triggered at 34 and a half months, providing significant improvement over the other two therapies. So under best conditions, you could get up to almost three years of living over that 10 months. Well, which drug would you take if it was 10 months or three years, right? It's a pretty easy choice. They tell us that, in fact, this news was so encouraging that the FDA elected to conduct a utility analysis and rush things. And they had hoped that by the end of the first quarter of 2023, they'd be able to determine if the study should proceed to 100% events triggered near the end of 2023 or unblind the data early due to compelling evidence of the benefit. Now check this out, an unblinding would trigger an immediate new drug application filing by the company. Ding, 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 ding. They unblind it. You can pretty much count the drug out there. They tell us this disclosure has triggered a significant and justified rally in the stock over the past few months. And you can see it on the chart. She is starting to grow, absolutely. They tell us that the company ended the third quarter of last year with just over $50 million worth of cash and marketable securities, and this should be enough to carry them through the trials and paying all the bills for the rest of the year. So we don't have to worry about that like you do with most biotechs. Most R&D companies don't have the money, so they got to keep selling more shares to big investors or little investors, and that just dilutes the heck out of it. So that's what's going on. They've got a hot drug. They haven't given us any time allotments here. We don't know when it's gonna be approved. So this is a long hold, but you're looking at a very promising drug that is giving more time than the best drugs out there right now, and they are being backed by the FDA, backed by China, backed by Europe. There's a lot of attention being given to this. It doesn't look like it should fail. Let's go take a look at that chart. As always, we've jumped on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this when you sign up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. And your only obligation, keep your account open. That's it. You don't have to trade with them. You don't have to give them a deposit. Just keep your account open and you can use TOS anytime you like, absolutely free. It's a bargain. All right, first things first, I'm giving you a peek here at my watch list for SPAC warrants. I have got about 80 or 90 here, and every day I add more, because every day I find SPACs that put out good news that have windows of opportunity. And believe it or not, all of these have windows of opportunity. Now, some days are hot warrant days, and some days are not warrant days. This was a not warrant day. Even though we have some warrants here that went up to 96%, that's pretty wimpy for a warrant. On a warrant day, you're gonna see huge gains. Just a few days ago, we had three of them that ran, one that went about 1,800%, uh, one that went 3,600%, and would you believe one that went 100,000%? No, I'm not kidding. So this was a slow day, but there were some gains to be taken. And just to show you the other side of the coin, there were our losers. And I'll roll this a little bit so you can get a peek at some of the others. But this is what I'm working with. So when I had to pick my six ones that I was going to invest in, I had no idea which ones to do. I had to find the windows of opportunity that fit my criteria. And those are the ones I jumped into. And I'm going to share one of them with you today. All right, back to why we're here. Ticker GLYC, six month, four hour chart. We got a low bubble back here in June of 51 cents, and we just had a high bubble of $3.52. Now we had a huge run right here when our financials came out. They must have been good, or they must have said something good in the financials because she took off. She jumped here from about uh, 65 cents, maybe up to that $3.52. So you're looking at at least 500% gains right there. 
Now, let me show you something that's really easy, folks, because I do want to put a channel in here. A channel shows me the top guide, the bottom guide, and then even throws one in the middle, splits it 50%. So this little icon right here, these two lines with an arrow, I don't know if you're going to be able to see my menu, some things it makes blind. I've pulled up my menu right now. Can you see it? You click that icon, and that gives you the regression channel. Now, this is super easy to use. You don't have to know anything. Right here, right? This is where our run started. So let's go straight up, all the way up here. And I'm going to poke my transgression channel up there. Boink. Look, it puts it right where it needs to be. You run it then however far you want to go and it will set the channel up automatically for you. It does this without me having to do any frustrating work. Look at that, how easy is that? And then I just extend it to the right so that it keeps on going as the charts are moving. So you can see she had a nice jump here off of that 200, off that financials, got inside that channel and has been bouncing around. Hit her head here, got across the 50% mark and fell to the bottom. Right there would have been a buy point. She then bounced up, got over that 50%, tried to get out of this channel, couldn't do it, fell back. Hit the 50-day SMA, that held her on to this 50% mark going down the middle of the road. Then she fell again. There's another buy opportunity. Then when she pushed up here, we were waiting for her to break out of the channel. What do we call that? Well, you just heard me tell you. It's a breakout. We're looking for her to get out of this channel. When she breaks out of that channel and intends to stay out, she's going to be like a dog out of her pen, off the leash. She's just going to take off and go. And that's what we're watching for. She has had a pullback, a lot of it, today. You can see the volume has been strong this entire time, and the volume was decreasing and is now starting to build back up. Technicals don't have a whole lot to say. They've kind of planed out right now. Not a lot going on. 20 day, one hour view. So there she is on our channel. She just barely got underneath it. Perfect buy spot there at $2.18. Rolling around inside that channel, hit her head here, and is now sitting on that 50% mark right in the middle of the road with a green bar after market hours. Technicals say she's still falling. Everything is still pushing down right now. We have had a little jump on the RSI because of that bar, but that's the only thing I see pushing up right now. Five day, five minute. All right, so a couple days ago, she was at a low of $2.53. Look at our 200 day SMA coming downhill. That low bubble is right there. She broke through the 200 and she's been climbing and yanked that 200 right on up. Now it looks like she's trying to roll back down right now. We're gonna to have to keep a good eye on this. What we're looking for is a good entry price. We wanna get into this and probably hold it the rest of the year as news builds up about how this drug is getting closer to the finish line with FDA approval. So buying in right now, you can see she's on that halfway mark. She could come all the way down here to $2.60. So a good habit is never to buy everything at one time, especially if you're in it for a long hold, because you have no idea what the stock's gonna do. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. We don't know what's gonna happen with the economy or the world. So we don't buy everything at once on a long hold. We buy a good price, something we're satisfied with, and then if it has a bad day and it falls all the way down here to $2.60, well, maybe you only bought 25% of what you wanted. Do you know how much you want? Or are you just looking at how much money you have and saying, that's what I want to get? You really need to know, do you want $1,000 worth? Do you want 1,000 shares worth? Find that number. And then say, I'm going to buy 25% at this price. If it falls, instead of getting upset saying, oh my God, look how much money I'm losing. No, look how much money you're saving. You can buy another 25% down here and bring your average price down. Because when she starts to bounce back up, you're going to be making more money because you have a lower price. And we do this until we have everything we want. Now, normally we don't buy everything until we see a breakout. But if you're in a long hold, you're watching this grow. It's going up and down, but it's growing. And when big news comes out, it could take off and that could be the time to sell. Nobody's saying you have to hold this until FDA approval. We're just saying she's gonna bang and you can take some gains off of her. So we're looking for low entry prices and of course, high exit prices. 
So I like GLYC. I think the drug is hot. It's given a lot of extra time to leukemia patients. They're going to obviously choose this drug over the other competitors' drugs. And I think it's going to probably get pushed through by all these different countries, which is a huge market. China's in there, right? And lots of people have leukemia. So GLYC for a long hold if you want some big gains, if they don't get bought out at a premium. As I promised, I was going to share a SPAC with you that I thought was hot and that I had just entered into. This is it. TKB Critical Technologies 1. The warrant sticker is USCTW, and it finished today at 19 cents with about 5.5% gains. Now, I think this is a very good opportunity, folks. We have a very tight window here. The company is in the middle of closing a merger right now, and they have a vote on the 27th to approve or disapprove it. And it really looks good. I can't imagine anyone disapproving it. So right now, I got in, and I think it's going to pop on Friday or Monday. You know what I'm saying. So let's take a look at the news that came out. Real recent news. We had one on January 10th and one on January 23rd. They tell us here that Weijo Group Limited enters into a business combination with TKB Critical Technologies. So who the heck is Weijo Group? Well, let's take a look at their description first. Weijo Group Limited is a global leader in cloud and software analytics for connected, electric, and autonomous mobility, revolutionizing the way we live, work, and travel by transforming and interpreting historic and real-time vehicle data. The company enables smarter mobility by organizing trillions of data points from over 20 million vehicles and over 94 billion journeys globally as of December 31st, 2022 across multiple brands, makes, and models, then standardizing and enhancing those streams of data on vast scale. And they use that data and they sell it to companies that can put it to good use. So they tell us here that... The definitive business combination agreement is expected to provide up to $100 million in capital to Weijo and $11.25 per share for TKB. From what I'm gathering here, Weijo is the surviving entity and all the shares and warrants from TKB are going to be transferred over to Weijo. So if you own any shares of TKB, if you own any warrants of TKB after they consummate the deal, two days after they vote and approve it, your warrants and your shares were converted to Weijo warrants and shares. So they tell us that they had planned on closing this in the second quarter of 2023, but they're having the vote on the 27th. So it may close down the road, but right now is the approval disapproval. This is the coin in the air. This is what everybody's been waiting for. Weijo's revenue in third quarter of 2022 was up more than 600%. Total contract value was up over 70%. Annual recurring revenue was up 63% and total customers were up over 80% when compared to the third quarter of last year. Weijo expects to gain deliver revenue growth in the range of 200 to 300% in 2023, representing revenue in the range of 20 to $30 million this year. Operationally, Weijo has been the recipient of multiple industrial awards, works with 28 automotive original equipment manufacturers, fleets, and tier ones around the world, boasts nearly 60 patents pending, and has strategic partnerships with General Motors, Microsoft Corporation, Sampo Holdings, and Palantir Technologies. Customers can use Weijo's data to transform public and private sector life by improving traffic flow and safety, enhancing insurance policies, delivering a better EV ownership experience, and offering a better return on targeted product promotion. Throughout 2022, Weijo received continued financial and commercial backing from investors and strategic partners, including large global automotive OEMs like Ford and General Motors and insurance companies such as Sampo Light and Vautox. The proposed business combination is structured as a stock-for-stock -stock merger. Now, this is how they're going to change all the shares. 
at the closing of the transaction, each issued an outstanding share and warrant of TKB will be exchanged for the right to receive a number of Weijo holding common shares and warrants, respectively, of course, based on an exchange ratio calculated by dividing $11.25 by the volume weighted average price per Weijo common share for 15 consecutive trading days immediately preceding the second trading day prior to the date of Weijo shareholder meeting. Weijo shareholders will receive equivalent shares in Weijo holdings. And the other piece of news gives us a little more information. Uh, TBK Critical Technologies is seeking shareholder approval of an extension of time that has that they need to consummate an initial business combination. The meeting is on Friday, January 27th. The extension to be voted on at the extension meeting and any redemption reversals received prior to the vote at the extension meeting would allow TKB to complete the business combination. And that's all we're looking for is a vote of approval. They've still got things that they're going to be doing, but this vote of approval is a hot catalyst. Now, I have seen these votes go through and there'd be a small delay behind the warrant. There may be a day or two and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get 3,000% gains. Now, the funny thing here is, is that Weijo is already on the market. Fact of the matter is, they've already done a merger with the SPAC some time ago. That's how they got on the NASDAQ. So they've already merged with one SPAC and now they're merging with another SPAC to get some money in to help them to grow. So they have a warrant as well. It is W-E-J-O-W. -E so I have bought both warrants. I have bought the warrant for this company, USCTW, and the Weijo warrant as well. If things go right, things are approved on Friday, I expect one or both of my warrants to run. So I'm hoping for a grand slam out of this. I don't know what sort of gain she could get, but that's the whole fun here. We know that hundreds of percent are low gains. A good gain is the thousands of percent. And everything looks juicy with this company, so I'm excited about it. Let's go take a look at that chart. While we're here, why don't we look at both warrants? We'll look at Weijo's and we'll look at the SPACs. First one we'll take a look at here is the SPAC, USCTW. This is a six month, four hour chart. We had a high back here in May of 34 cents. She fell out of that channel and went all the way down to triple zero four from 37 cents. Can't even tell you how big of a number that is. Wouldn't you have liked to have bought in right there? She then crossed her 50, got a lot of strength, pushed right through the 200 and has had a couple of bounces here, but is pretty much starting to go sideways. And to be completely honest, I think she's going to continue to go sideways until Friday. She's just going to hold there waiting to see what happens. Just the feeling. Not a lot of volume coming in. Not yet. And our technicals, they are weak. It looks like she's still actually wanting to fall. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, she's been climbing pretty steady most of this time. She started this runoff here at about a penny and a half, and she ran up to 25 cents. Oh my God, you're looking at 15, 1600% gains right there, folks. She then fell all the way back to four cents. Wouldn't you have liked to got it right there? Just under the 50, she bounced right back up, put herself in line and is now going sideways on that 19 cents line. Technicals on the hour don't look very strong. They're pretty cool actually dipping still. Five day, five minute. Going sideways, there was your 25 cents all the way down to a nickel, bounced right back up, right up underneath this resistance and she's going flat. You can see the bars are getting smaller and smaller and she is sitting on top of that 20 day SMA. And I think it's gonna to continue to do that until we hear what happens at this vote. Let's take a look at Weijo. Weijo is the company they are merging with. We have, uh, let's bring this down to four hours. All right, there's a six month, four hour chart for Weijo. She was at 60 cents, right now is at eight cents. Boy, that would be a huge gain right there, folks. That'd be like 600% gains easy if she got back up to there. She has been falling all of this time and has gone pretty flat, actually. She had a low here of three cents roughly, and she has been coming up. I can see I don't have my hike and ashes. You see these little dashes here? There, you know, you really can't see how she's moving. 
Watch the difference here when I turn on my Heiken Ashi. That is not just a basic candle, that's a different candle. Look at that. Doesn't that look better? Full, you get to see everything. You can tell a down mark instead of just a little line down here, we can see how far the movement was. Looks a lot better than just your standard candles. So she's bounced off of that low bubble. She's gotten over 200 day haul, which is a lot like your 200 day SMA. Each of them average 200 days together, but the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. And people do use it, not a lot, but I do. <laughs> she has gotten up over the 50 and is sitting there right now on top of the 50, looking like she's primed and ready for a run. She is under the 200, but she's had some strong pops here showing strength. We do have a little more strength on this one. Things are pushing up right now, looking like she's ready to bounce. 20 day, one hour view. Well, she had a bounce here, bounced off that three cents over 50, over the 200 to hit 10 cents, bottomed out right there on that 200 haul. People are paying attention to it. Bounced off of that back on top of her 200 day SMA and then bounced off her 200 haul again. You can see what's going on here. She's bouncing on that haul up over to 200 SMA back and forth. And right now she's back up on top of that 200 day SMA. It's really great positioning and our technical show she has a little bit of strength. Not much, but she doesn't look like she's fallen. Five day, five minute. Now there's a fall. We've got a nice roll over here. We hit a high of 9.2 cents and she's rolled down to this nickel and bouncing off of it right now. And our technicals, all right, you see this perfect mirror image here, right? Coming closer and closer together like a bird's beak. Well, the closer it glitz, gets, the more it is falling. And when it starts separating, like you see right there, getting further and further apart, it means the price is climbing 100%. You see the PPO going up, the percentage price oscillator, and the ADX, your trend continuation going down. That is a guaranteed play that that is rising. So things look good right now. MACD is about ready to do a crossover, approaching her signal line, and her RSI is a bit tempted. So it's really not about where they're all sitting right now, the SPAC or the merging company Weijo. It is about what's gonna happen when this approval comes through. And I do believe it's gonna be approved. I don't have any doubt about that. Weijo looks like an excellent company. They say they're gonna be doing 20 to $30 million worth of business next year, actually this year. So that's a great company to be in. I think both warrants are considerable. I've gotten into both, I'm hoping both run. Whatever you do is on you, but do it quick. We got a two day window here. We're now taking a look at a stock that caught my attention through the charts. I was looking for charts that had heat and this one looked pretty decent. So then I went and did some due diligence trying to find some new, some catalyst that could actually lift this. And this company has been very busy. They've been making a lot of deals here recently. And I think there's a good possibility we could see some growth out of this. So this is ticker VVPR, Vivo Power International. Finished the day at about 41 and a half cents with almost 12% gains. Now she is on the NASDAQ, she is a penny stock, and she has had a warning. You see that price, under a dollar. Anytime a major exchange stock goes under a dollar for too long, they're in the danger zone. They could actually be kicked off of the major exchanges and thrown down to the OTC, which we see happen a lot. Well, they have gotten a warning and we're gonna take a look at that. But they've also got a lot of news from October, November, and January about deals that they're making in a very tight niche that they have focused in on. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us down here at the bottom of one of these news presses, Vivo Power is an award-winning global sustainable energy solutions company focused on battery storage, electric solutions for customized and ruggedized fleet applications, solar and critical power technology and services. The company's core purpose is to provide its customers with turnkey decarbonization solutions that enable them to move toward net zero carbon status. Vivo Power is a certified B Corporation with operations in Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the United Arab Emirates. So they're doing business everywhere. And what they're really focused in on right now of all the things that they do are 
turning secondhand cars into electric vehicles. They're actually taking gas cars and making them fully electric. Now they're not just doing this for anybody in any car. They are working with companies that have fleets and doing their entire fleet. Or they're working with a car company and doing one line of cars for them. That's the sort of thing they've been getting their business from right now. And that's what we're going to see in the news. So what was the relative volume around this company without any direct catalyst today? Well, she's done twice as much as normal. She went from 352,000 shares to 687,000 shares. Definitely under the radar, but definitely growing. Share structure. All right, had to go look this one up. She has approximately 11 to 12 million. That's the same number that kept coming up over and over, both of them. I'm not quite sure which one it is, but they're close. So we're looking at a low float, 11 to 12 million shares of this NASDAQ stock. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the news, and it's going to talk to us about this notice they got from the NASDAQ. Remember that. The outstanding shares is 21. The float is 12. Disclosures. What do we have over here? We got a lot of information. Now, I did go through most of these, and I didn't see the warning. It had to be way, way back. One of these 6Ks is a new advisor that they just brought on, and most of the 6Ks are about the news that we're going to take a look at. So let's just jump into that. First piece of news here came out October 28th. This is the notice that they got from the NASDAQ. They received a letter from the NASDAQ indicating that based on the closing bid price of the company's common stock for the last 30 consecutive business days, the company no longer meets the requirement to maintain a minimum bid price of $1 per share. However, and this is important, NASDAQ's notice has no immediate effect on the listing. But that was back in October. That was like four months ago, right? The company has been provided a period of 180 calendar days. That's six months. Or up until April 26, 2023. That's the end of their six months in which they will have the opportunity to get their price over a dollar close over a dollar for 10 days straight. If they do that by April 26th, they're out of hot water, everything's good. If they don't, they could be kicked off of the major exchange and brought down here to the OTC. In the event that the company does not regain compliance within this 180 day period, the company may be eligible to seek additional compliance period of another six months. Maybe, you don't normally see that though. If not, the company will be able to provide written notice to NASDAQ of its intent to cure the deficiency during the second compliance period by effecting a reverse stock split. That's always a resolution to this problem, folks. A reverse stock split. Right now, they're at 41 cents, so they would have to do... Now, they're just not going to push the price over a dollar. Why get just over the line? You're going to want to push that bad boy up. So they could do, say, a 1 in 10 and take it down... Uh, take it up to $4, which would bring our share structure from 12 million down to 1.2 million. And you would have a super duper low float stock on the NASDAQ selling at $4, catching people's eyes. Now, why would they want to look at this company? Well, let's take a look at some of this news, some of these deals that they're making. This one came out uh, November 28th. Tembo, that is their sub -zary, that's the company they're primarily working with, announces a definitive agreement to supply EV conversion kits for 4x4 electric light vehicles in landmark deal. The definitive agreement increases total commitments and orders to 10,000 kits. Total addressable market for secondhand vehicle repowering is estimated to be worth $110 billion. How many companies are doing this? They could tap into a very huge market. They tell us that the company has entered into a definitive distribution, distribution agreement with energy trading company Martitius to sell, distribute, and market Tembo electrification conversion kits for Toyota 4x4 secondhand vehicles in the Republic of Kenya. Under the agreement, ETC Mauritius has committed to sell a minimum of 4,000 Tembo ELV conversion kits from execution of this agreement until the 31st of December 2027 across various industry sectors in Kenya. That's one deal. The next one comes in November 14th. 
The company has entered into a supply agreement with Evolution Group Holdings for the full electrification of its fleet of light utility vehicles for traffic management and fleet management. Under the definitive agreement, Tempo Australia will convert existing and new vehicles to full electric over the next five years. Subject to the successful completion of commercial and technical on-road trials with the target to have the first fully electrified utility vehicle certified and roadworthy by 2023. Now this isn't something new. They've been doing this for a while. As a matter of fact, let me move this up. Matter of fact, they've got their first car they're celebrating has been on the road for five years. So it's not like they just started doing this. They do have experience in it. And that third deal, pretty impressive if you ask me. The company is pleased to provide a strategic investment financing and development update for its wholly owned subsidiary, Tembo ELV. Tembo and Toyota Motor Corporation Australia have now concluded the design service agreement with Toyota Australia for the Land Cruiser 70 series. Viva Power and Toyota Australia will each continue to explore opportunities as part of their commitments to a sustainable future. Now, just in case you've overlooked the fact, Toyota Motor Corporation Australia Limited is a wholly owned subsidiary of Toyota Motor Corporation Japan, the world's largest car manufacturer. So they just did a deal with the largest car manufacturer in the world. Viva Power has secured further bridge financing, money to carry them over from this point to the next point they need to get to, from its major shareholder, AWN Holdings, of $3 million. And of course, they're going to use it for Tembo's growth. Tembo has also secured strategic investment from a sustainable, focused family office investor in the United Arab Emirates for 2 million euros. So they've got money coming in to keep them going and they keep making deals, including one with the biggest car manufacturer in the world. You want to see what the chart looks like? Of course you do. Let's go look. This is VVPR, six month, four hour chart. We had a high bubble back here in June of $2.47. Maybe a week ago, we hit a low of 21 cents. You can see she has been stuck in this channel not going very far and right now she's changed direction she was falling 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 and now she's going up 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 we got a whole new channel which is a heck of a lot tighter our technicals are all growing our ppo is very strong for a week pushing up our macd has been arguing but it has been pushing up as well and we have just approached the overbought on our rsi and in case you overlooked it our ppo is going up our ADX is coming down. That means our trend is going up. Everything looks good here. The volume has been pretty strong these last 10 days. Hopefully that'll continue. 20 day, one hour view. So there's our new channel. So she has been riding up and down here, hit a low bubble here, good time to buy in. You can see she broke out of that channel. Chances were she was gonna come back into it. You don't know it until she bounces. So actually you wouldn't buy down here. No, because we don't know what's going on. But when you see one, two jumps up, well, then you could buy on the second bar because it looks like it's going up. And look how big the bars are. So this would have actually been your buy-in. You want confirmation of the direction you want it to go. Down here, we don't know what's going to happen. So right here would have been a good time to get in. She went all the way up to her upper bar on her channel. That right there went from $0.25 cents up to $0.36. Cents. So you're looking at a 30% run right there. She fell back to her middle ground here. Another big drop and another big buy bounce in but what do we got here we got a breakout she's come out of her channel she is pushing up and even pushing harder after market she's now up to 44 and a half cents she wasn't that high at the end of the day actually she was at 41 cents so she's gone up three cents after market on the one hour chart everything is looking good her ppo is climbing macd is climbing rsi is still right up underneath the overbought let's see what we got for a five minute so she was consolidating right here on top of that 200 day. You can see that one day, two days, bounced off of it, had this big drop, and we're getting used to that, aren't we? Big drop, it's like, you know what? I've seen this happen a few times. I'm gonna get wild here, and I'm gonna buy some right down here. 
you might get lucky because she has a tendency of doing this. She did come right back up. And from 26 cents, just to get back up to there was 32 cents. So you got yourself, what, uh, eight, about 30% gains there, 25% gains, just getting back into the channel. And then she went to the very top of the channel, which was all the way up there at 40 cents. So that was a nice climb. Now she's sitting on top of that middle bar and she is pushing away from it. Look at that sitting right on top of her 50 day SMA on top of the nine day, huge bar at the end of the day. Technical say she is still growing. All of our technicals have been strong. She has shown a change of trend. She is now starting to go up. I can't tell you how far she's gonna go. We could start drawing some support lines in here, right? I could go get my support line here come in here and start drawing. Now you can see one right there. Absolutely. She's already gone past that. Okay. So then we got another one right there. We got one right about there. So we're looking at uh, 47 cents, 64 cents as she starts to climb from her 41 cents. Then we got another one up here at 70 cents. There are lots of supports, folks. And you see what I'm doing. I'm just looking for that place where the price stops and changes direction over and over again. You can see the lines, and that's all we're doing. So when the price starts to approach that line, I'm going to expect it to maybe slow down or bounce a little. And I'm going to wait to see if she can get on top. If she can get on top, she's going to try to push for that next line. And that's what we wait for. Sometimes you want to sell right there. She's fighting too much. It looks like she could fall. She's going to bang her head. Good time to sell right up underneath a resistance. All right. That is all three stocks. I hope you enjoyed them. So those three charts came from different types of due diligence. One was just looking at charts, seeing what was warm. One was listening to someone tell me something about a stock. That's always good input. And then of course, doing my own DD. So we've got VVPR, the last one we looked at, doing a lot of business, electrifying cars, not a lot of competition, charts look good. Look like they're gonna continue to grow. Then we had ourselves the SPAC, which I'm excited about. Wejo and uh, USCTS, what was that? USCTW. I'm excited about that. I bought both of those warrants. They're merging together. They're voting on it on Friday. I expect two pops. I expect both of these to run. Maybe not that day, but right immediately after it, real soon. And then, of course, the very first stock we looked at, GLYC. They've got a hot drug for leukemia. That's going to be a long hold, but I can see that one growing too. And if you happen to be in it when they get FDA approval, oh God, I can only imagine the gains that you could get. Remember folks, due diligence reveals a lot. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Studying charts, studying news, listening to people, just following the trail. That's it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.